Yeah, so I recently had an opportunity to, to spend some time with the AMD Pensando team. They, they've been partnered with HPE uh, Aruba Networking for quite some time. You're making me dizzy, man. Uh, <laughs> and and, uh, and that sort of culminated in an opportunity for me to work with the AMD team and in, in, in publishing a research paper, going a little bit deeper in, into Pensando. And, you know, there are a lot of DPU options out there, right? You've got NVIDIA, you've got Bluefield. Intel has its Intel processing unit. Marvell does yep. DPUs. But, you know, what I really like about Marvell, and this, again, is a gratuitous promotion for my research paper, uh -huh. um, but our viewers and listeners, if you're interested, you can go hit moreinsightsandstrategy.com and, and download it and learn more. But what I continue to be impressed about AMD is just, you know, the just the sort of the, the evolution of, of that platform a focus on providing software, shocking. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about uh, AI platforms earlier. Mm -hmm. Platforms are defined by silicon, software, ecosystem, blueprints, you name it. And so from my perspective, you know, some of um, uh, AMD's competitors in the DPU space, they sort of allow others to sort of focus on the software and, and, and that sort of thing. They all arguably enable ecosystems and that's really important to ensure design in a silicon and that sort of thing. But again, I continue to be impressed with um, just the holistic approach that AMD takes. And I know they're your former employer, and so you're you're pretty bullish on them as well. And for me, um, talk about you know business outcome and what you know, and that really from my perspective is demonstrates the power of, of any solution. And in the course of writing the paper, I did get to speak with a partner at DXC Technology. So DXC technology has deployed the Aruba CX-10000 switch mm -hmm. that contains the Pensando DPU. And um, they've accomplished some pretty amazing things. They've been able to consolidate their data centers from 200 down to 60. And at a very high level, uh, and speaking with um, a few executives there, they've realized almost a 50% uh, operational performance improvement deploying, deploying AMD Pensando. So, wow. But very, very compelling. And I know, you know, Matt, you're a former employee. I'd love to get your take on where you think AMD is is, is headed with, with Pensando relative to the competition. Well, I loved I loved the fact that AMD went out when they first acquired Pensando. Just like when they acquired Xilinx, I was so happy to see them do it because to me it showed, you know, they were a company that um, for a few years after launching Epic, they had a lot of work in front of them establishing themselves as a legitimate, uh, not even alternative, but competitor to Intel, right? Yeah. Me acquiring Pensando and Xilinx signaled that they had arrived and they had established. And I love that they're able to take, um, they're able to complement what the, all the goodness they've done in, in Epic with Pensando, with Xilinx, and sometimes all together. Yeah. What I'm curious about is, I see a lot of work around Bluefield from NVIDIA kind of building out an all-up AI environment, right? And I see companies like Vast Storage and others really kind of, uh, yeah, Vast Storage, Vast Data, uh, and others really kind of glom on to um, uh, leveraging Bluefield to deliver faster data to, um, to AI machines, if you will. Yeah. And I, I, I haven't followed Pensando as much, but I'm curious about whether there is that same level of ecosystem um, support for Pensando. I have to think there is. Um, I just haven't been tracking it as much. No, there, there is. And I mean, what NVIDIA is doing may be a little more front and center and visible because the, again, they're, they're leaning heavily on the developer community to, to yeah. put the software around what they do. Again, you know, AMD has made an investment in that, but but absolutely, AMD has uh, an ecosystem, you know, that has been built around that to support, you know, the scalability and you know future, you know, capabilities that can be leveraged from from it. So, and I love that Lisa and team have taken the you know taken these acquisitions, Pensando, Xilinx, and have let them run uh, and continue to innovate and don't focus on specifically just an AMD stack, right? I mean, it's like, go be the innovation engine you were that we yeah. fell in love with and continue to grow and and, um, and build your compelling value prop instead of like 
how yeah. do you fit into everything we're doing, right? Right, and then and then sell adjacency, right? So I think your point is spot on. They've they've done a great job, you know, allowing you know these acquisitions to to grow and innovate. I mean, because you know, oftentimes, you know, and you and I and you know, Paul know this. You know, we've worked in corporate America. Mm -hmm. um, often, when you you combine you know acquisitions, you, you lose something. You know? Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not the one and one equals two or three. It's the one and one equals one point five. Right? <laughs> Usually, yeah, that's yeah. that sometimes happens. So yeah. yeah.